What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project. This is kind of like an impromptu video right now because I was moving some cars around and I was just about to park strawberry back into the shop when I had an idea to come up with this little video in terms of what to do and what not to do with your Fox body. video has nothing to do with modifications and you know what's good what's bad none of that this video is actually about how to treat your fox body especially when you daily drive them so since i've been down in texas strawberry has been getting some miles put on it and you can see it's it's actually really dirty if you don't believe me take a look side skirts filthy Windshield's dirty. I even had my emergency windshield wiper installed on here because I never typically run wipers on any of my cars. And um, I had to put one on just in case because the weather's been a little volatile here lately. So in terms of whether it's a daily driven Fox or it's a show Fox or whatever it is, there's kind of a set of rules or guidelines in terms of how to handle and care for these cars. They're fragile, they're old. You wanna prolong the life of your OEM parts as much as you can. So let's start off with a simple one, getting into your car. And some of you guys are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about, but to others, again, this is just, you know, trying to give you guys some tips and some pointers. The door handles. Door handles on these cars are very fragile. They break. They snap, you know, it's um, sometimes when the one side lets loose, then you got to kind of like maneuver it if it'll even work. But the last thing you want is to break your door handle. So when you're opening your Fox, be gentle. You know, you don't need to like reef up on the handle um, and, and pull super hard. And you know, there's some of you guys, you know, when somebody's getting into your Fox and you're just like, you almost want to open the door for them just so that, you know, they don't come and start reefing like this up. Oh, it's simple. And I even keep pressure on the handle, the mechanisms on the inside here next to the door lock. So I actually kind of usually keep my thumb on the top, keep pressure on the top of the door handle so that, you know, it's not putting too much pressure on that fragile, brittle mechanism and just kind of pull up like that. The next thing, don't let the door swing all the way open and, you know, put unneeded pressure on those precious door posts and the hinges and the jams. So always make sure you catch your door. You know, you don't want, especially if it's windy, you don't want that door swinging in the wind and getting overextended and pushed or, or things bent or any of those types of things. Which leads me now to closing your Fox body door. Don't need to slam it. Nice and easy. Now, if you have new seals and sometimes you need to get a little bit more pressure on the door, let the door do its thing. No bum closes, no hip checks, none of those types of things. Um, nice and easy, nice and gentle. So inside your Fox body, don't use the map pockets. Rule number one, if you have a 90 through 93, do not use them. They are there for decorative purposes only. They are not functional. You put something in there, they're gonna stretch, they're gonna sag. So if you're wondering how these ones look so nice, you can check out my video. I'll link to it on how you can fix your map bag pockets. I actually did the ones in this car. So if you want them looking nice, um, don't put anything in them. So there's another tip. Now, there's so much stuff just on the door itself, right? So when you're getting in and out of this car, so we'll go in right now. And don't mind the mess, guys. Like, I'm telling you, this is a daily driver. I got carpets to return in the back here. It's a little dirty, so please don't mind that. I will get to it. I'll make sure it gets all cleaned up. So next thing, when you're grabbing this armrest right here, these things are so fragile like everything else on these cars. So you can see how this one's a little worn here, but if I were to grab it from where the seam is on the backside here and just kind of like pull like you would naturally want to do, I'm gonna wreck what's left of this armrest. Um, 
and I just I don't want to get into having to replace it right now so you can prolong its life same thing grab all the way on the inside you know down on the hard plastic and pull it like that instead of grabbing it from the top and potentially wrecking your armrest pad more than it already needs to be so that's important door handle again you don't need to uh, be he-man trying to open these things because if you put too much pressure on here um, or you end up your hand ends up putting pressure on this cup you're going to crack the bezel here so you don't want to do that either so i think that about covers um, just getting in and out of your fox body for starters now another thing is if you're going to upgrade your stereo you cannot take these off these speaker covers are part of the door panel if you're going to access that speaker you need to take the screws out need to take this armrest off all of this stuff the whole door panel needs to come off don't be the guy that pulls this off and then ends up needing to put a screw through here because it's no longer attached to the door panel anymore so again big no-no so another thing um you know when you're in the car that's really important the ashtray door same thing keep some resistance look at this i got a receipt got change cigarette lighter um daily driven fox when you're opening this guy nice and slow same thing when you're closing it and that way if you're you know if you just flick this thing open and let it snap back the spring might pop out of place or you're going to break the little arm um, on the back side underneath here as we all know these guys are are very fragile moving on to the e-brake so you can see this one here so you can see the rubber is actually sitting down and I need to do a fix here. Um, I use automotive goop typically um, to hold these guys back in place. A lot of people try hot glue, it does not last. Um, but the important thing to know here is that when you're using your e-brake, don't be the guy that just reefs it right up. Not only is it unnecessary, you're going to rip the rubber because typically the e-brake see how it moves from side to side when you're pulling up in this motion and you're reefing on the e-brake it's going to want to rub against the side here and you're going to end up tearing this rubber so it's important to pull the e-brake straight up keep it centered and to avoid pulling it over this way and wrecking your rubber down there so there's another lesson for you guys armrest pad this is inevitable. Um, the only way that you can get around from not breaking this, if this is still um, your piece is here and you don't have like the little fix done, the only way to avoid that from happening as much as possible is you actually push the release button in, then push the pad down, and then release out. Um, this guy breaks as a result from you know the pressure of hitting this and trying to snap it back from pressure and that's what breaks this guys it's getting hot in here um switches same thing um these guys are never really in here that well to begin with they're easy to pop out um you know when you're turning your headlights on um you can be gentle you know just click it on see how this one's kind of actually a little bit loose and i've never even had this apart um, so maybe this switch has been out or it's been replaced, but clearly there's a broken clip in there. Um, just be gentle uh, with your switches. Um, that goes for everything. Just be soft, be gentle. Um, same thing with the vents. You know, make sure that uh, you're not trying to reef them over or whoever's the passenger in your car. You know, don't let them mess with this stuff because all of this is brittle and can break. All right, so moving on. To the outside of the car again hatches so if you guys have a hatch and um, you're opening and closing this guy important thing is change your hatch struts shocks whatever you want to call them if they're not working it's such a simple thing to do your hatch stays up on its own and what it'll help avoid 
is you grabbing on your wing, if you guys have a GT, um, or in this case, a Dutch wing, or if you have any wing that's sticking out that could be used as a so-called handle, um, that's a no-no. You don't want to be pushing up on your wing um, the same way you don't want to be grabbing the wing to be pulling the hatch down. So make sure you grab you know, the hatch itself in a nice secured spot and bring it down nice and slow. If your striker is not aligned and you need to be slamming this thing down to get it to latch, then align your hatch. See that? Nice and soft, soft close, no issues. Um, gas door, same thing. It's kind of spring loaded. Don't let it just snap out and keep pushing back. Be nice and soft with it when you open and close it just to avoid, you know, anything moving. You want to keep your body lines nice and tight and straight there. Gentle, be gentle. Moving on to the hood. So when you open your hood, no problem. Hopefully you have a prop rod um, and everything is good to go underneath here. The only thing that I can say is that if you need to let your hood drop from up here, um, please, please adjust the latch. Um, lubricate it, do whatever that's required in order for your hood to shut properly. And if you haven't noticed, I'm actually missing the little bumper that goes right there in that hole. It looks like that. So I'm gonna be grabbing one off the parts car. Those bumpers are important because they act as stops. And those stops keep your hood from going down too far and sometimes crunching and cracking off the plastic of your um, turn indicators in here. I've seen them crack um, in here as a result from too much pressure on your headlights most likely from people who didn't install the headlights properly with all of the proper hardware. Um, but same thing, guys. Closing the hood should be effortless. Like, that's it, right? It's latched down. I didn't have to drop it from so high. I'm not sitting there trying to push on it to get it to latch and potentially put some dents in the front of the hood. Um, if you can't do it nice and gently, then Take the time, do your adjustments, and make everything fit and open and close the way that it should. So I think that's about it. There's probably a whole bunch more that I could <laughs> um, find and share with you guys. Um, if you guys have some suggestions, be sure to throw them down in the comments. Um, happy to uh, give anyone credit to the things that I've missed. Maybe I'll do a part two video um, and give some shout outs there. Um, again, this was impromptu. I was just getting in the car. Like I said, I was going to park it and I'm just like, I need to do something to, uh, just for those that are new or those that just maybe never even thought about it and just like, ah, whatever, you know? So hopefully this video will help you guys preserve, um, your Fox body and the parts that are on it and the last longer, less likelihood of things breaking. And, um, especially for you guys that are daily driving, you know, cause you're getting in, you're getting out all of those things all the time. Um, so it's really important that the more gentle that you are on those components, you know, the less likely they're gonna wear down on you that much quicker. So there you have it, part one of how to treat your Fox body. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, all of those good things. We'll see you guys next time.